welcome or welcome back to my channel Stitch and Style by me Nadia and today I have a very special guest because we're introducing a new sewing challenge happening in April and it's for Bowel Cancer Awareness Month and um, Ben's here to speak a little bit about his personal journey and so I hope you're going to find that really interesting and then um, at the end of the video I'm going to talk about the sewing challenge and how you can get involved. So just a couple of things that I wanted to mention before we start talking is um, that we are both not doctors um, so we can't give any medical advice or anything and Ben can't speak about anybody else's journey um, but he's here to share a little bit of his own journey with us. you tell uh, my viewers a little bit about yourself? Hello I'm Ben, I'm 43 years old and I've window cleaned really since I left school and I really enjoy it. Yeah you love working outside don't you? Yeah, being your own boss. So what do you like doing in your spare time? I uh, recently started enjoying park run thanks to Nadia um, which has led us to visit quite a few different places up and down the country so it's been nice to see those especially the ones which are nearer the coast because I love being by the sea or the ocean if you're watching in America and I also like watching football on TV and comedy and police dramas. When did you find out about having bowel cancer? Well I was going to the doctors about things unrelated in um, 2019 when I was 39 um, and I was having some blood tests which led for them to find out that I was anemic and I had low iron. Um, my GP sent me to Stepping Hill Hospital for um, to see a consultant there who pretty much the first time after examining me just sent me um, organised a colonoscopy for me um, so that was a couple of weeks later and even though they, they can't really tell you on the day that it is cancer um, they found you know a, a large mass um, in the lower bowel um, and it was quite clear really that it probably was going to be cancer, although we did have to wait a couple of weeks for the diagnosis. Yeah, that was quite a difficult time, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was quite difficult, probably more so for Nadia and my mum, I feel now. So then you had an operation, didn't you, to remove the um, tumour? And um, how did you end up with a stoma? Um, the first operation... Um, I didn't have a stoma, the surgeon managed to avoid giving me one but um, it's, I didn't feel right all week after the operation and my surgeon came back um, a few days later and sent me for a CT scan which uh, revealed that the, the joint hadn't worked and uh, I had a leak so I was rushed back to theatre and then when I woke up unfortunately I had a, a permanent stoma um, so yeah that was it was quite a, an eventful week but again I was in hospital and out of it really under sedation but Nadia and my mum were the ones who had to deal with the, the worry and the stress at home trying to get in touch with the doctors to find out <laughs> if I was still alive. <laughs> yeah it was actually that was a pretty difficult time for me I remember um, but um, it was all successful wasn't it and they managed to get out all of the tumour and they tested your lymph nodes and they all came back clear. So that's really positive news. Um, so yeah, you had um, a stoma. So let's just, for in case people don't know what a stoma is, just explain a little bit about what a stoma is. Yeah, before I had a stoma, obviously when they, they taught you through it um, beforehand, because there is always a possibility that the surgeon may give you a, a temporary stoma, um, but before that, um, I really had no idea what a stoma was. And it is really, they, they pull a section of your bowel out through your stomach lining and then uh, that collects um, waste then into a pouch or a bag uh, which is stuck to the skin around the stoma. And then you maintain that by changing the bag when, when needed. Uh, I have a colostomy, um, which is on the left hand side and then some people I think generally if it's a temporary stoma have an ileostomy which is on the right side 
um, but they can usually be reversed at um, a later date. That's really clear, thanks. So how did you feel about having a stoma? I think while you're in hospital it's, it is easier because um, you have obviously the nurses uh, helping you with it because you've suddenly got this um, thing that you have to change and look after and and clean and it's you know it is it's quite challenging but it is obviously a lot easier in hospital um, but then yeah it is it just just brings its own challenges then from then on. So what would you say like the biggest challenges are with having a stoma? And I think as a young younger male um, toilets for males aren't, aren't designed for for people who need to get rid of waste there's not generally like nappy changings in there they're generally in ladies or disabled toilets um, so that that was quite a challenge it took a long time for me to sort of feel comfortable using a disabled toilet because it's not necessarily the change in the bag that, that you need the space for but it's just a disposal and um, I think places are getting better at, at recognizing that people need access to you know sanitary bins or nappy waste bins um, but yeah, even now it's still not always the case, and you have to just find then a um, just a waste bin in the in public for for disposal, which is a shame. And I think that could be something that needs to be looked at on a bigger scale, and we're trying to achieve um, with this this challenge. Yeah, I think it's really important that people are aware about what it means when people have a stoma and. Um, to break down some of that stigma and for it to become a little bit normalised in society for people to recognise um, what challenges other people might be going through and also why people might be using disabled toilets. They might not have a visible disability but they might need to use the disabled toilets. So yeah, hopefully this um, and you speaking so openly about it will help um, raise awareness about that and maybe help other people who might be going through it at the moment. Um, so that brings us on to actually what are some of the positives about having a stoma? Well on top of having bowel cancer I do actually they found that I had colitis so having a, having a, a stoma bag um, just gives you time to, to find a, a toilet um, to change your bag and it's just it's meant especially because I work outside a lot um, I'm not always as, as worried about being close to a toilet um, and so it has, it has helped me in that way um, with work a lot. Yeah and we went for a walk didn't we um, and you said that before that you had a stoma you wouldn't have felt comfortable being that far away from a toilet would you? So actually it was really good that we could go on a walk together um, and you not be so worried about being like away from a loo. Yeah, so that obviously people who have stomas, it isn't, isn't always cancer that causes them and it is other things like Crohn's and uh, colitis mm -hmm. and it is, it's just a very challenging time because there's not enough public toilets out there for people and yeah, like Nadia said, uh, we're able to do things now and you do have to always keep in mind um, where toilets are but I think that's the case for a lot of people anyway um, but it just means you've just got time and um, to be able to get get to a, a toilet. And you said that um, actually if they gave you the option of reversal you perhaps wouldn't go for a reversal would you? If you eat, I know you don't have that option but... No, somebody uh, came to see me in hospital who had been going through, he'd been um, having CT scans for, I think he had his stoma about 10 years ago and he, he chose to have a reversal and he said to me at the time um, it was the worst decision he made because now he's just got all his old stomach problems back which were nothing again to do with cancer um, but then it's just so he, he wishes he did he did kept his stoma um, mm. and it would have made his life a lot easier because now he's back to square one and just he can't go anywhere without knowing where a toilet is and like you say I've not got the option but I don't think I would I wouldn't want to go through another operation anyway and risk risk it not working again so yeah, it wasn't ever really in, in my mind to have it reversed, even if I was given that option. Another thing I was going to ask is, um, does a stoma, a stoma smell? Not generally. <laughs> it, at the end of the day, it is a bowel movement. Um, and 
sometimes w the, the time it smells generally is if you have wind trapped in the bag and that escapes through the filter and that can sometimes cause a smell but generally it's once you've bagged it um, it's not too bad. I don't smell it at all. Actually, I think you smell a bit better <laughs> since you've had a stoma. <laughs> the other thing I was going to ask was about stoma noises and um, your stoma waking up. Well, I only know one other person with with a stoma and that they were quite surprised when they heard my stoma um, make a noise because um, it doesn't happen to them, they've got an ileostomy. I don't know whether that's true for, for that case, but yeah, I'm quite, don't know if it's because I drink gassy drinks or the food I eat, but mine is quite vocal sometimes, so you can hear it, and my mother-in-law jokes about it, and my friend at work says I should put a whistle on it. I think the most frustrating thing is just that you don't have any control, so you can have a bowel movement at any time, you can't stop it or encourage it. And that, that can be quite frustrating because you can be getting ready to go out for a meal, you can be all ready to go, clean bag on, set for the night, and then just as you're about to leave the house, you can have a bowel movement and you're back to square one and you have to like then go back up to the bathroom. And so that that's a little bit challenging, but again, you just, you know, after four years, I've, I've just learned to deal with that. Yeah, I suppose you also kind of time when you're eating to then like take into account um and i suppose that's a little bit of a challenge isn't it because if you were going to be planning on going like on a journey or or going out for the evening you perhaps would wait until eat later rather than eat before because then you might um you know need to be changing your bag um at a time when it's perhaps not convenient yeah but again i think that could just be my bowel anyway which the problems i had before the cancer so yeah, we can't really say whether that's the same for anybody else, but is is that is just the case for me. So what are you going to be doing to um try and raise some money for Bowel Cancer UK this month? Yeah, so we've signed up for um, a five K run in Blackpool, so we're gonna um use that to try and raise some money. We're both going to be running the 5k which we're really looking forward to. It's going to be your first race ever isn't it Ben? So you, how long have you been running for? Um, just only 15 months I started, did my first part run but it took quite a while to get into it. I was only doing maybe one 5k a month but now I'm, I'm trying to get out two or three times a week, join Nadia's running club and just trying to get fitter generally because I never, I was never really fit anyway. That isn't nothing to do with cancer or recovery but you know it certainly helps going forward if if you can be fitter to hopefully avoid um, other illnesses. Yeah I think it's that's the one thing about your bowel cancer that really helped me was to um, just appreciate my own health and also to change um, my lifestyle so it's a little bit more healthy and we built healthy habits. It's great now that we actually are sharing the love of running and doing part run together. And we, you did your first 10K, didn't you, at the weekend? So I was really proud. And hopefully you might be able to get a PB um, when we do our run in Blackpool on the 23rd of April. So we've set up a Just Giving page and we'd really appreciate all your donations um, as part of this challenge. Like linking it back to sewing, um, what about my sewing practice has helped you? Well, I'm quite tall anyway, I'm six foot five or thereabouts. Um, so I always struggle to find clothes to fit me, but obviously when then I had a stoma, um, the bag does sit down, you can't really tuck it in. Um, to your pants like under your t-shirt because um, you need to sort of keep it free um, so Nadia started making me longer t-shirts um, which has just helped so much um, like I say I needed longer t-shirts anyway but this has just given me a bit more confidence that um, you can't really tell I've got a stoma um, just because it's like just freer and you just can't buy t-shirts like that in the shops Yes, yeah, so I think like that's one of the 
the best things that's come out of my sewing is actually that I'm able to make things that fit not just Ben's body but also my own body and um, yeah that's what the focus of this challenge is going to be is fitting um, clothes to you and your body and your own style so what I'm going to ask you to do in um, April is to sew a pattern that you've adjusted in some way and um, to post it on Instagram from the 22nd of April to the 30th of April using the hashtag oh so me 23 do you think that sounds a little bit like ostomy mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's why I've chosen that name um, oh so me 23 and also to tag me um, so my Instagram handle is stitch and style by Nadia with underscores in between each word and I'll pop it up here. Now because this is for Bowel Cancer Awareness Month we're also asking you to donate if you can to our Just Giving page um, and it doesn't matter how small your donation is we appreciate every single donation um, and so does the charity. Me and Ben have donated first prize for the sewing challenge of 100 euro um, gift voucher for Beyond the Pink Door. And we've chosen Beyond the Pink Door because she, well, not only is she absolutely fantastic, Andrea, hello, um, and she does some lovely fabrics, but she also ships worldwide. So hopefully then everybody can join in. Obviously you'll have to pay for your shipping and what have you and take that into account when you use your gift voucher if you're lucky enough to win it. So that was the first prize. Second prize is a 50 euro voucher for Beyond the Pink Door. And the third prize is donated by our lovely sponsor and my favorite sewing pattern company, which is Helen's Closet. And they've donated one free pattern of your choice um, as a prize. We're really grateful to Helen and Sam for um, donating a prize to our challenge. Make sure you um, post your make. Let me know what adjustments you've made. I'm going to pick the winners at random and I'm going to do that on the 2nd of May and announce them on Instagram. So I hope I've covered all of the rules and everything. Um, if I haven't and you've got any questions, please do let me know down below or please check out my Instagram page. Now I do think you're going to have to have a public page for me to be able to see your posts. Good luck everybody. <laughs> yes, good luck. And please um, do remember to donate to Bowel Cancer UK. Support our challenge um, and just show your appreciation to Ben for sharing his story. I think it's really brave of um, him to talk about having a stoma and his journey with bowel cancer. It's an important cause. We've both had relatives, close relatives that have had bowel cancer as well, and um, a childhood friend that had bowel cancer. Just make sure you see your GP if you have any symptoms like blood in your poo or um, I think looking back, I didn't have any symptoms. I was going to the doctors about other things, but um, looking back and after reading about symptoms, I was bloated quite a lot. Um, again, I put that down to drinking, you know, sparkling water or fizzy lemonade. Um, but please, just if if you've got any worries or anything, any different changes in symptoms last longer than a couple of weeks, just go and see your GP. Um, mine's been absolutely brilliant. Um, she just sent me straight away and. Bowel cancer is one of the easier cancers to cure if they catch it early enough, um, especially with all the you know the research that goes into it. So yeah, just please please go and see your GP if you need to. Yeah, I'll put up some of the symptoms up here actually um, from Bowel Cancer UK. So if you do have any of those symptoms, as Ben said, it's really important to get checked out and. Um, 
because you're just so fortunate and we're just both so grateful to everybody who treated you at the hospital and at the GP and for your early diagnosis and everybody including like the stoma nurses and everything were just absolutely fantastic weren't they yeah really really supportive and so we want to just say thank you by hopefully raising quite a lot of money for bowel cancer uk thanks very much for watching thank we, you we really do appreciate it and um i'll see you next time bye bye Hello, I'm Ben, um, 42 years old. Oh no, I'm not 43. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm 43. Now. Right. I think that's a really good video, do you? Well, once you've edited it, though. <laughs> right, I'll just stop it then a minute.